we have the 1FZ FE Land Cruiser 80 series inline six engine. I'm getting prepared to do the EGR delete. And I want to make this video to show you guys how it originally is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the EGR before we remove it. And then I'll show you guys the process of how we do it. This will be my first time doing it on this engine. I have done the EGR delete on the 22RE and the 3.0 3VZE V6 engine. So I'm familiar with the concept of it. So this one here has the EGR delete only. Whereas like the 3.0 V6 has like the pier valve. So this one is just the EGR. So this is it right here. We have one vacuum. This vacuum goes right down here. This is the EGR tent sensor. You can just unplug that. You got this vacuum that goes to the modulator. This vacuum here goes down here to this one. And this one out here goes to this one. So once we remove this, we're going to cap this right here, these two. You can cap these two or you can just route one wire back to each other and do like a U-turn route. And then it looks like we also have one vacuum line down here. This one down here goes right onto the EGR. And the block off plate that we're blocking off is going to be right here on the intake. Once we take off this bolt here and the bolt over here. So that's one of the block off. And then it's really hard to see on this engine, but there is the pipe that goes into the exhaust. And I heard that's really hard to get to. So I'll let you guys know how I deal with it. So on the passenger side, that bottom vacuum line is the one right there, white and yellow. That goes to the EGR exhaust intake. And then we had to remove that big nut right there, unthread that. And then the pipe goes down there into the exhaust and that's gonna be the tricky one and you can see here that's uh that wire harness right there is the engine harness and it's right next to the hot pipe and one of the biggest issues is that that wire harness can get burned and a lot of people that keep their egr um, you must wrap your wire harness right here with some heat tape heat resistant tape i've done that on my red one my red cruiser already but I'm gonna do the EGR delete on this engine first so I know how it goes and then once I'm successful with this engine I'll go ahead and do the EGR delete on the red cruiser so it looks like pretty good right now I have a check engine light on already for EGR and I think it's because of this cap right here but I taped this off with electrical tape and it's still the lights still on so I think the whole unit is bad in general so we're just gonna go ahead and delete it anyways and it's also gonna make more much more easier to work on the engine so far i removed this this is the modulator connects here and then connects down here these are the two lines that go into it so what you were going to do is we're just going to cap it like that we're going to take one of them and cap it like that and then this one over here goes here we're going to remove this and get a cap for this right here they sell the caps and stuff or you can just fill it up with PVC. And then the two uh, for the big nut right here. This one down here. Just needs the vice grip. I don't know what size this. And then that one's already loose. And then I got to loosen these two 12 mils. And this piece will come out. Half of the EGR. Once you remove the two 12 mil. This EGR thing comes out. Like that. And you can see how that's held in there. I saw some photos online where when they install the plates, they have studs instead of the bolts. So once I get the plates made, I'm going to see if the bolts are going to be made. I might have to get some shorter bolts. So this is it right here. That's what it looks like EGR. So this is what it looks like for so that bottom one. This bottom one here goes right here. So that's what you guys couldn't see really up there. So that's how it is right there. Got it. Set this aside. And now the hard part is getting that pipe. This is the pipe that goes all the way down there. So let me investigate and see what's needed. So here's the first cap. Those two vacuum lines. Take one out. Cut the other one and just loop it around. It's good enough. 
and this one here we'll figure this one out later so right down there that boat right in front of the middle of the screen and the one below it those are the two boats that's holding the rest of the pike so you see that right here look at that that's a tricky shot to get to the thing is that once i get it off and once it's time to put the plate the block off plate in it's gonna be super hard to get in there so i think i'm gonna have to remove this heater hose this is the heater um heater core wire the hose coolant hose probably remove this out so we're gonna spill some coolant a little bit and then i'll see if i can reach in there maybe use some extension some swivels this is much more harder than i expected i ended up removing my heater core wire hose i took off the bolts for the wire harness on the back wall just so we can have some room like that and what i'm looking at is that if you guys know where the pesky heater hose is this hard line here this hard line is the pesky heater hose that goes down and if i look down i can see the bolts for the uh egr exhaust pipe here and i think i'm thinking that if i go down here and remove my pat driver wheel and do um remove the pesky heater hose like if i was going to perform that task i think if i remove the pesky heater hose i should have access to get to the two bolts by using some long extension and swivel because i think getting it from the top is not going to be an option it's not going to work it's way too tight it's like on this firewall here so we're going to have to try to remove the front tire and attack it from the bottom up. So that's what we got removed so far. You don't want to make make sure you don't damage your hard line right there. That's your, uh, this one here is your heater core. And the one down there, the one that's green, that's the rear heater. That one we deleted already, so that doesn't matter. Same here with that one. Front driver removed. And you can see right you guys a better angle that right there is the pesky heater hose and then those two bolts right there that's the uh that's what we're going for so i think we might be able to get it from here here's the pesky heater hose right there this is the thing that uh the hose that goes to your cylinder head and this right here is uh known for failing this one was still working fine but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and bypass it we're gonna run a long hose from here and just go right to the firewall so we're gonna skip all this right here and this is the that's the setup that i have on my red land cruiser this is the 12 mil boat holding the egr pipe this is the bottom one i was able to get the bottom one but i can't get the top one because i can't get a good leverage on it so i'm gonna go buy a 12 mil ratchet flex head and hopefully that will give me some better leverage because right now i'm using just the regular 12 mil wrench and it's just really not working it's been a few days since i left the egr project on our last video, I told you guys I needed a 12 mil flex head. So I purchased this 12 mil flex head. This didn't really work out going from the bottom. So I ended up just, I'm gonna have to resort to moving the whole, removing the whole intake plenum and going from the top. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm currently in the process, I removed some of the hose already, yeah, some of the bolts already, power steering. And then we're just gonna have to take off this whole plenum, the top plenum the bottom plenum we might even have to remove the fuel rail system so i highly recommend if you guys want to do the egr delete um, do it when you have a reason to remove your intake plenum because if you're going to remove all of this it's a good time to replace your gaskets your throttle body gasket clean your throttle body and then also degrease the inside of your intake plenum uh, maybe even rebuild your fuel injector once you remove the take plenum you're gonna have access to your fuel filter so if you want to do the egr delete plan to do it when you're planning to do your other tune-ups uh, for this case i'm just gonna go ahead and <coughs> remove the plenum uh, i'll probably clean the throttle body a little bit use some brake cleaner i have gaskets for the plenum so i'll put new gaskets <coughs> and we'll get the egr fixed and then we're not gonna do the fuel filter or anything like that um, because this is by Lexus 450. This is just my beater heater. So that's the tip for you guys. You might be able to get the uh, the EGR pipe with the 12 mil flex head. So what happened was <coughs> on the, the pipe right now, there's two bolts and I, I was able to get the bottom bolt of the pipe, but then the top pipe, it's so hard to get a 
it's hard to get a a a uh, a a socket or a wrench on it because there's like a little bump on the pipe and it's hard to explain but once i get it out i'll show you guys <coughs> and you can't get a good leverage on it or in my case i was stripping it so i was stripping that bolt and i ended up using vice grip and i couldn't get a good grip with the vice grip on it so we're just gonna have to tackle it from the top and most likely once we get it from the top we're gonna have to use the vice grip from the top because the head of that temp of uh, the head of the toll mill boat is a little bit stripped already so that's the issue there i i even sprayed it with pb blaster before i started taking that nut off the boat off and that wasn't working as well so if if i were you guys uh definitely do go try to get it from the bottom first you will have to remove the pesky heater hose and you're gonna drain all your coolant in that case but try from the bottom if that doesn't work then the last resort is you're just gonna have to remove all of the intake planning because there's literally no way around it you can't get it from the bottom unless you unless like how i'm doing it you can't get it from the top because the firewall is blocking it and man this is this is the worst egr delete i ever have done man the 22re is easy the 3.0 is easy um but this one here is it's simple enough it's just those two bolts on the firewall that's causing the issue so that's the update guys uh, make sure you guys take photos of all the pipes and stuff. I didn't really take any photos because I have my other cruiser. I got my Red Land Cruiser, so if I, if I miss out something, I can also go back and look at that engine and it's the same stuff. So, But yeah, definitely take photos of all your vacuum lines, where things goes. And then for me, I like to take the boats off and put them back where they belong so I don't lose it. But yeah, this is be my first time removing the intake plenum. Should be pretty fun. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to show you guys a walkthrough it, but, you know, you just remove all the thing that's holding it and then take it off. This is one big piece, and then you have a one big piece down here that connects to the cylinder, the head right here on the driver's side. Keep you guys posted on the EGR Delete on the 1FZFE. It's been roughly about one week since I started the EGR Delete. Last week we st i stopped because i couldn't get to the bolt right there that shiny piece so we have to remove the intake plenum throttle body lower intake plenum this inline six engine is one of the worst to work on that i've that i've worked on i worked on 3.0 3b uh 3vze 5vze 22re 3rz and those engines are super easy super fun but this one here is super super tight there's literally no room over here there's a lot of plugs a lot of nuts and bolts uh the top intake plenum the bolts go from the underside instead of the top side um accessing the bolts for the intake to the cylinder head was super hard especially on cylinder five and then once you remove this you can't get it out because the engine harness goes in between one of this so there's no way to get this out unless you unplug all the wires that's going down there and then pull this up which is crazy because this goes down to your knock sensor transmission all these wires so i got it to this point right here where we're at a tilted angle and now i'm gonna try to take this pipe off so that shiny bolt which is the top one that's the one that we've been trying to get to and I think we might have plenty of room to get a vice grip or something in there. And hopefully we can get it out because if we can't get it out, it's going to be a heck of a uh, PITA, man. So if you guys are looking to work on your 1FZE, um, if you guys are looking to do like an overhaul tune-up and just everything that involves taking the intake plenum, I highly recommend you guys just take up the whole engine. Honestly, if I had the shop and the place to do this properly and i knew that it was going to be this hard i would just remove the whole engine out and that therefore i can do all the front seals and all the seals and everything you can just do everything so much easier if this engine was out but if you're working on the engine when it's in the vehicle this whole side is super tight on the exhaust side you have you definitely have more room on the exhaust side that's why everybody do turbos over there but on the intake side, it is just a pain. Show you there, and this is the wire harness that's always touching the EGR hot pipe. So once we get that set up, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up with some tape and give it some new protection. But the intake plenum is semi out. It's super dirty. Uh, throttle bottles, throttle bottles dirty. 
Just a very dirty engine overall. 10 years. So that down there is where the EGR goes to. Two bolts. And here it is. Will you look at that? <clears throat> so this is a... Uh, let me show you guys what went wrong. So this is the 12 mil. It's all dinged up. Had to use the vice grip. I was able to get a vice grip on it when I was going from the bottom. But my issue was I wasn't able to get a good leverage to uh, loosen it. That was the biggest issue. And the reason is, if you look right here where this EGR pipe is, the reason why it got stripped out is you see how it's like it's bump. You see how the bottom one's flat and you can get a wrench on it or whatever. So for example, um, you take your wrench, you see how you can get on it. But over here, since it has that little groove, has this little bump right here. Whenever you try to, whenever I was placing my, whenever I was placing my uh, my ratchet like that, you can see that it's not seated in. It's not seated in, it's it's at an angle and every time you try to yank on it, and that's how I stripped it. And then again, you cannot get a bolt behind it. Even if you were trying to get this socket behind it like this, as soon as you put the socket in, there's only room for the socket. You can't put your ratchet on it because it's right against the firewall by the time you try to put your, your ratchet on it. And that's the reason why there's not a lot of videos on the internet showing you how to do it because I guess it's a pain in the up. It's, it's, it's just a, it's a nightmare. And I was searching videos on how to remove the intake manifold and there's like no videos on the, on the YouTube channel. And I figure that's why because I'm pretty sure when people are doing this, they just get super pissed and super mad. They don't really want to film this. I didn't film any of it because once I'm in it, once I'm doing stuff, I just want to keep on doing it. So I didn't have time to film it, but it's pretty straightforward. You know how to remove, you work on the engine before. It's pretty much straightforward. Just getting all the bolts and nuts and all that stuff. So now we're going to go ahead and take this. And uh, to make the block off plates, I got some aluminum, um, aluminum sheet. And we're going to use the gasket and trace it over and make a block off plates you can also go and do um you can also as some people said you can also just cut this right here cut the pipe off and then weld the pipe weld it so that it's closed up and i'm not gonna do that because this is just too bulky this, this is gonna make it even worse to work on so we'll make the block off plates and then uh we'll get some new bolts for this guy and go from there so here is the intake plan and we have it out of the engine and this will give you guys a better view, better demonstration of what to look for. So right here is where your throttle body would go to and then this is the final EGR right here. <coughs> you can see here the uh, EGR vacuum mod modulator right here, the EGR itself and then this is where we screw it down and then this is the hot pipe that goes to the cylinder head that was a pain in the world. So this is how it works. It goes on like that. So basically we're going to be blocking off this right here. This is the gasket. We'll use this as a template um, to cut one off of our of the aluminum plate, and then we'll block it off like that. Um, this hole right here, I cleaned it already, and uh, it's not a level hole, so you can't just get like a um, you can't get like a, a block off plate and cap it on there. You have to fill it up with something, so that's the reason why you have to make an actual block off plate. So that's gonna be filled up. And then, like I say, the sunder hole, that's the one for it right here. The gaskets is there, but we're going to go ahead and make one. So I'll show you guys how I'm going to do it. Uh, this is a DIY, all DIY. And uh, go from there. So this is what it looks like. And if you uh, if you take these out, make sure you sell it on eBay because a lot of people do look for this on eBay. Uh, this piece right here, if it's still good and it's new or, or a brand new one of this thing here, costs like over 200 bucks. For the block off plate, I will be using this aluminum piece right here. This is a 1 8th, an eighth inch, um, two inch by three feet long, which is plenty, like 12 bucks or 15 bucks at a uh, local, um, local warehouse store. So what you do is you will just have to take the uh, gasket, trace around it, and we're only gonna trace around and drill the holes for the bolts and nuts, but in the center, we're gonna keep it block off, so. Um, there are two different size, one for the cylinder head, and then one the longer ones for the intake head. So I'll go ahead and do it, and then make sure it works. And then once it works, I'm gonna go ahead and cut another one because I need two sets. I'm doing the Lexus, and then once I finish with this one, I'll go ahead and do the Red Cruiser because I want to do it on both of the rigs of my rigs. 
So this is what I'll use. And um, I'm not going to show you guys how to do it because it's pretty self-explanatory. Trace it up, put it on a vice grip, and get out the grinder and start grinding. Here's our first test. I drill the hole first before I cut it. Make sure that we're on par. And so far it looks good. So you can see I'm gonna have to retrace my lines. I'm gonna go through, gonna got to go a little bit wider. But for the most part, you just need to make it uh we're not gonna make it perfect, at least somewhat near it. So I'll go ahead and retrace around. Go a little bit wider right here. Okay, cutting aluminum is a little bit more difficult than I thought, man. Cutting aluminum is a whole different thing. This is the closest thing we're going to get to. It's not the prettiest. I grind it down, made it smooth. So I'm going to put that on there. Put a new gasket on. I'm going to put a new gasket, and then I'm also going to put some RTV around here. Just to make sure that's fully seal proof. And I think I might just order some new plates for my Red Cruiser because... Uh, I think I kind of want them to be pretty. I want them to be pretty on my Red Cruiser, but for the Lexus, I don't really care too much. So um, this will be fine. I haven't put the gasket on yet, but that's what it'll look like. Pretty, right? Very nice. Not bad at all. <laughs> so uh, Wits ends, he sell his on his website for like 20 bucks a piece. And I think I might just go ahead and spend the money on that. Um, I just wanted to see if I can do it myself, but it's not pretty if I do it myself. There we have it. We have the second plate for the EGR uh, install <laughs> with some black RTV and use the old gasket. And that's what it looks like. Not the prettiest, but nobody's ever going to see it. Time to go ahead and slap everything back together. Hopefully it goes smooth. I do have a new gasket for this intake down here, and we'll go ahead and put that on. I kind of wish that they made this piece right here, split it. This is a two-piece. This is a one-piece. Uh, I think it would have been nice and easier if they would have made this a two-piece where it splits right here. And then you have two gaskets instead of one long one. And that gasket's going to be a little bit tricky to get in there too as well. I'm going to go ahead and spray with brake cleaner, try to get some of that stuff off. <sighs> almost done with the installation got the lower intake install um, fuel injectors installed didn't really rebuild the fuel injector if you're gonna do this definitely get some new seals for your injectors the only thing i did was just uh spray it down with brick cleaner and then wipe them down and then um man everything is so tight the ground there's a ground wire right behind here super hard to get to <coughs> the, the two bolts for this intake manifold down here hard to get to and it's a really tight spot overall. If you guys don't remove your engine and you're doing it like how I'm doing, take the time to remove your uh, hood, man. Just unbolt it. It's two bolts on each side plus the bolts for the struts. Just remove your hood. This hood gets so much in the way. So if you're going to do like what I'm doing in the vehicle, just take the hood off unless it's raining or something like that. And it uh, makes it a little bit more easier for your head space. But we're almost done. <coughs> I'm just taking it slow here. I'm just taking it slow, um, making sure I get everything in there. Uh, make sure everything's tight. This uh, this is the hard line for the fuel. You have to unbolt from the fuel rail and from the fuel filter. Um, so if you're going to do this, make sure you put a new uh, fuel filter. I didn't do it on my rig because this is just the cheap, this is the cheap bill for the Lexus. But I will be doing the new filter for my red one. And I'll order some new um, gasket seals for the injectors. And some other tips um, that I have at the moment is uh, just take your time. Double check your work. Double check everything. Make sure you don't lose any bolts. I'm going to go ahead and check my spur plugs while this thing is off and get that done as well. I think um, I think I forgot, but I should have done the before I install this. Well, if you have the lower intake off, you might want to tackle the pesky heater hose first. And it might be a bit easier if you're just gonna if you're gonna do like a hard bypass where you just go from the pesky heater straight to the straight to the heater core, which is what I'm doing. Um, the reason why I didn't do it because I forgot about it, and also I didn't really took this off. I just had it at an angle, and I think it still would have been hard to do it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the pesky heater hose once I'm done, and I'll go from the bottom up from the bottom like how I, we, I usually do, and usually that's pretty easy as well. But other than that, um, 
it's time to slap on the top intake manifold and then we'll go ahead and slap on the throttle throttle body get everything buttoned up put some coolant here all, all the coolant came out because of the pesky heater hose so go ahead and put some coolant bleed it and then we'll go for a test drive and also make sure we plug the um the harness so this wire here this wire here is the wire that goes to the engine harness and this is the one that plugs into the egr temp sensor so what you do is you'll put the resistor you'll jump it between these two plugs and that will um, bypass the check engine light i'm gonna go ahead and drive it without it for a couple miles until the check engine light comes on and then once it comes on i'll go ahead and put a resistor but that's pretty easy as well if you guys are doing this project and you guys are going down to like how i got it to the intake manifold definitely take your time and make sure you have a pressure washer in this case i'm just kind of rushing and if i was taking my time and if i was able to use my pressure washer i definitely would pressure wash the inside of this intake so you see how gunk it is you want to spray some degreaser and just go through it with the uh, pressure washer and just blast it off if you have the money you can take your intake manifold off to like um, a shop a machine shop that does like a hot tank and they can hot tank it for you but if you want to do it yourself just degrease it and then just spray it down with your pressure washer man wash the inside it's not gonna hurt it you definitely want to remove all these electrical stuff which is easy but for the most part you can just pressure wash the inside I just went down and just quickly sprayed it down with one bottle of a of a brake cleaner and I'll probably have to do it I'll probably have to do it again right here but definitely um, do that take your time doing this job and just the Lexus start up uh, perfectly fine on the first start uh, it's been running for the last 30 plus minute the heater is super warm much warmer now I guess every time I flush or I, every time I put new cooling it gets warmer so for the record at 197,765 EGR has been deleted check engine lights on we have a co p0401 and p0401 so this is an EGR code right here the exhaust gas recirculation flow is insufficient so that's what the EGR is um, exhaust gas recirculates back into the intakes and get burns so we went ahead and delete that I'll have to take a look and see uh, if I have any more resistors but if you don't have the resistor you can just get it on eBay like the 10,000 K with a resistor um, I think I should have one for my last project so I'll go ahead and plug that in next week I went ahead and cleared the check engine light I want to see if it'll pop back up later on when I restart the engine Runs great, nice and smooth. This one actually has a better throttle response compared to my Red Cruiser. That's gonna wrap up the EGR video for the Lexus or the 80 Series 1FZE. I'll keep you guys updated in the comments section once I put the resistor on and let you guys know how this vehicle drive. If you guys don't know what the EGR is, please do your research. Don't do this modification unless you fully understand the performance and the purpose of it. If you guys got any questions, comment down below. Follow the Instagram, 90 new underscore 4 by 4 I'm going to go and give the car a nice wash and put it back in storage. Talk to you guys then.